Our first leg of the journey was from London to Svalbard. This is one of the stops I was most excited about, as even from stepping off the plane, I knew it would be like no other place I'd ever been. When we arrived in the little town that is only home to 2,000 people, we immediately headed out to explore. It's flipping cold. One of my favourite things were these little colourful houses. The way they contrast against the white snow is just amazing, and I knew I was going to love it here. We woke up early the next morning, met with our guide, Kietel, who had organised everything for us to do. Kietel is famously known for being the Aurora Chaser, so I knew we were going to be in good hands. We managed to organise all of this through PayPal. We then jumped in the car and headed to the location where we were going to be going dog sledding. It is a glorious, glorious morning. The sun is out and it's looking delightful. Today we are going dog sledding. We're at the place where we're picking up the dogs, we're gonna put them in the truck and then we're gonna get on the sleds and go and have a bit of an adventure. Being greeted by the excited and happy dogs was amazing. They were all so looked after and each had their individual characters. After loading the dogs into the trailer, we fitted them with their harnesses and we were off on our adventure. What an incredible experience and such a unique way to see the beautiful landscapes. I love stopping with the sleds and being able to take in the surroundings. The dogs were amazing and they pulled incredibly the whole way. After our journey had finished, we went to meet some of the puppies they had and they were unbelievably cute. So this one's Spotify. Yeah, she has spots around her eyes. And this one is Instagram. Instagram. Insta, and that's Twitter. And then Twitter. Good names. Yeah. Good names. <laughs> oh, oh. get over how affectionate and playful all the dogs were. Dog sledding in the Arctic was definitely one of the best experiences I've ever done and I will definitely be doing it again. We then took a trip to the port to get on our boat and this was going to be our home for the next couple of days. I will start even though you want it or not. Jake and I were really excited about this as we both love being on the water and this is probably one of the most unique places you can do that. Boat time! We met with our captain, Stain, who was an amazingly friendly guy. He told us what we were going to be getting up to, and we loaded the bags onto the boat to begin our journey. The views from the boat were like nothing I'd ever seen. The beauty was so overwhelming. completely offline as there was no internet and no phone signal, which was so refreshing. It meant there was no distractions and we could just take everything in around us. After a few hours on the water, we approached Pyramiden, where we were going to be docking for the night and meeting with Sasha. He was going to be showing us around the abandoned Russian town. One thing about being in the Kingdom of the Ice Bears is that you always have to be armed walking around. However, it was a little bit daunting being greeted by Sasha and his rifle, but at least I knew we were going to be safe. Pyramiden is a Russian settlement that was sold to the Soviet Union in 1927 and was closed in 1988. 
it has remained abandoned ever since with pretty much everything still in place. And you really do get that feeling it's like a ghost town. It's as if everyone has just upped and left. We also found an old grand piano, which is the most northerly piano in the world. So to say that we played a few keys on it, that's pretty cool. Wandering around the pitch black corridors and auditoriums was a little bit freaky, but also amazing. And it definitely got our adrenaline going. Scary. We found exploring it really fascinating, as again, it was such a unique place. exploring Pyramid and, and this place is bizarre it's like no other place I've ever been it's completely abandoned we've been checking out um, the, this is a cultural and sports hall um, and there's like a library and a hall in there it's yeah it's mad we then headed back to the boat to get some sleep as we were starting early the next morning woke up to the most incredible surrounding landscape we had ever seen. Stain, our captain, hadn't woken us until we had arrived at this point. I was actually woken by blocks of ice hitting the boat. I then got up and was greeted by these insane views. I will have that memory forever and couldn't even believe that this beautiful place existed. It's nuts. I'm a paycheck from a stable man, no money I'm not able to But the honey made me crave to Anything sweet, costly or free What a pay So we've just taken the boat into this bay area, it's called Skansa Bukta and it's, it's just insane, this whole place is just blowing my mind, like I cannot believe it. There's a little ca a bit cabin here and uh, I can't imagine what it would be like to kind of be able to stay there and just have no one around you, it's, it's, yeah, it's absolutely epic, it's the most epic place I've ever been to, it's just uh, incredible, there's no one for miles and miles. And, uh, it's, just, it's just unbelievably beautiful. We slowly potted along and made our way around this amazing area. But our time in Svalbard was coming to an end as we had to catch a flight to Moscow for the next part of the journey. Svalbard is one of the most amazing places I've ever visited and I'll definitely be coming back. Svalbard is done. Next stop, Moscow. These streets tangle you, police so far can strangle you. If it pushes a quota through, and I got the greased up collar. Call me the greased up scholar. My clock is decreasing dark. It is also amazing to think that in such a remote part of the world, the experiences that we had and the people we met were all able to be organized and paid through by PayPal. So stop one is complete, no cash spent. Next stop, Moscow and Svalbard, I will see you soon.